Max was a journalist. Um, he was going into communications, and um, he had been writing in high school um, for a company called Def Pen Radio out of New York City. He uh, wrote in three years, like 360 articles um, for Def Pen um, on bas- mostly basketball, but a lot of sports articles. He, he was big in, very big into sports and sports journalism, and he was going into LSU as a political communications major um because he you know he was like I want to branch out a little bit and um I think you know he really was into politics and and hearing what was going on in the world and thought you know I'll go into this I can always still do sports and he was actually going to start writing again his freshman year for another company winning take with sports while he was getting his communications degree He, you know, it was a last minute application that he put in and, um, not for any reason besides, you know, we're here in Georgia. Um, we, we have some dear friends from Louisiana they and a lot of LSU fans, like a lot of friends that are LSU, that went to LSU are LSU alum and from new Orleans. And so a lot of our friends are big go tigers. And he was just like, you know, I think I'm going to apply to LSU. And so he did. And, um, he got accepted and was very excited and Steve and Max went to go visit LSU in like October, November of last year. Max and I like to, uh, like to eat. Okay. And of course. I, and I, I've been to New Orleans and Baton Rouge and Shreveport. I've been all over Louisiana and the food is, in my opinion, the best in the country. So it was I indeed taking him down there to enjoy some the, the best cuisine in the country. And sure enough, he did. They went and they both fell in love with Baton Rouge, and Max fell in love with Baton Rouge. And um, Ma- Max brought his uh, LSU bound sign back with him and planted it in the front yard mm-hmm. right under the Clemson flag. Yes, and I was like, I don't know what this is doing in my yard under my Clemson flag, but mm-hmm. um, but he did. He fell in love with it, and he was very excited. And you know, he still was waiting on you know other schools and stuff. And but when it all boiled down to it, I, LSU was definitely his number one choice he already started wearing lsu t-shirts he was ready to go he got accepted to all these other places but he's like you know we knew like I, we kind of knew and um and he just he did he fell in love with it and when he decided that that's where he was going we you know put both feet in with him like and we were excited for him and you know i went to go see the campus last summer um when he had orientation and I fell in love with it too. I fell in love with the, the Baton Rouge. I fell in love with your school and was very impressed by it and could see why he liked it so much. And then he went to Stripes over the summer and again, just came home from Stripes and could not stop. He was ready to go then. Like he was like, <laughs> why was I in the first session? I want to get there now. And, you know, he just, he did. He just, he fell in love with your school. Um, yeah, so I was an 80 pie at Clemson and I had a great experience, Max. Like I said, he didn't want to, like at first he wasn't talking about doing Greek life. And then he, over the summer after talking with, I think other freshmen that were going in, kind of was like, well, maybe I'll try it. And we did, we definitely talked about it. I was like, you know, try it. You're going to a really big school. Um, it, it'll be a great way to meet people if you don't like it you don't have to do it. I mean, I know definitely people that go through rush and then they back out and they don't want to do it. So I didn't think it was a bad thing for him to try for sure, especially at such a big school like LSU and just meeting people. So, and he went through rush and he had a great experience during rush. He was very excited. Um, he talked to us most day, almost every day. I think, I think every day and was telling us who he liked, you know, who kept inviting him back. He had a lot of, you know, different fraternities looking at him that he was looking at and, um, and for whatever reasons, however it worked out, you know, he did, he settled on Fidel and he was very excited on Fidel and, you know, really liked that it was a smaller fraternity and he thought he was going to be able to maybe do some leadership things in it later on as he went on. And, you know, we looked it up and, and, it looked like a, a fantastic fraternity. It was anti-hazing, anti-alcohol house. And 
you know, we just looked at that more like, wow, that's great. Like they're definitely, I mean, we understand, you know, college age kids and you guys, you know, there's drinking and there's things that go on. You guys are away from home and we're like, well, that's great. This fraternity is def like one that must definitely deter that kind of behavior. Right. And so we went into it, you know, definitely very positive and thinking this was a great decision for him. Like he did. Absolutely. Again, you have to Mac, a boy, a yeah, young man. I have um, a brother. He's a freshman. Talk, at they don't talk to their moms and their dads as much as the girls do. Um, it's a lot of texting and a lot of different things like that. So um, he never, I mean, everything he ever said was positive and he had a lot of friends outside of his pledge class also. So he would tell us how he was meeting his friends from Stripes for lunch once a week and they had these things planned. So he just definitely was going into college life with a lot of different groups of friends and a lot of different people he was around. So he just, you know, and again, we were only a few weeks into it. We were all still trying to, you know, figure everything out. And he's, you know, a, he's a real positive, friendly kid too. So it's, there, there really was never a whole lot of negative indication coming from about anything really. Um, I got the first phone call. Um, I was at work. I was about. I was about to leave for lunch, and my phone rang, and it was a Baton Rouge number, and I just answered it, and it landed up being the hospital. Um, and and then I had to call Steve. I was at work. Uh, it, she found out Max passed away before I got home, so it's that's a bad day. He was driving. I was driving. So I didn't want to call him um, to tell him I got the second call. Because um, obviously that's not something you want to tell somebody while they're driving. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I had a feeling something was, was really wrong, obviously, from the way that I was told to come home immediately. Um, but I, I didn't expect that. Well, we both just, like, when I was on my way home from work, you just keep praying. You're praying that um, he was going to be okay. But, you know, and you're just hoping. And, again, you're just praying, like, it's got to be fine. It's got to be fine. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's surreal. Um, it's unbelievable. Your mind just wants to take every thought of that and push it out and it just keeps invading back in because it's real and you know it is but you still want to fight it um it's the worst thing that's ever happened in my life and i can't imagine anything worse could happen in my life as bad as that and i remember the big thing was that my my alex and lily just how am i going to tell them and trying to get them home from school and how were we going to tell them that their brother was gone? Um, but you just, it's, you, your mind just doesn't want to accept it. You just don't want to accept it. They came home in, in this room right behind us. We all sat on the couch and we told them, cried for an hour and a half or more. Or until whatever we had to leave. But I mean, it's just, it's, there's no words for it, really explain it it's very difficult um but I, I can tell you that that boy's looking out for us he's shown us a lot of signs um and you know one one thing that we've talked about is that the day that, that we got back from baton rouge um and and that that wasn't easy obviously being at baton rouge and um father andrew was very helpful with us your catholic priest um, um christ, the king. christ the king uh but when we got home rayanne was uh looking for a, a journal of max's he was obviously an avid writer and she ended up coming across um a journal of his that was written on blessings and it was amazing. Um, he, he talked about his his blessings in that, and at the end, uh, he wrote that that God works in 
funny ways, I'll paraphrase a little, um, he does bad things to ultimately create good. And there's a little bit more in between there, but that really started us on a, on a path of trying to create change to create good for him that he wanted us to to do something positive and and it helps it helps a great deal talking talking to you guys helps talking to because we know this is going to get out to you know a, a lot of people that it, it's going to help create change it's going to make people think twice before they haze it's going to help people think i'm going to step in i'm going to see i see something i'm going to say something i'm going to create change um and and that that definitely is is helpful to be able to get out and, and try to create that change. Max's life was completely one hundred percent worth it, and he did not deserve this, and it should not have happened. It was totally senseless. Um, we hope we're making a lot of changes, and we are definitely working with um, a lot of groups, obviously like NIC, eighty pi, NPC. And we're hoping to see a whole, a lot of changes and we have seen a lot of changes and, you know, I would love for my kids and for us to someday feel really comfortable allowing them to join Greek life. But I, I couldn't say right now that we are absolutely comfortable with that. Um, you know, that's just something we have to wait and see on and, you know, and right now my kids aren't comfortable with it. I mean, you have to imagine that my son is like, you know, just. I don't need that. I, look what happened to my brother. You know, he's about to go to college next year, and it's not something he's interested in at all. And you can't blame him for that. And it's not something I'm gonna be like, oh, you should try it. No, I mean, we're all kind of like, listen, we we did. So and, and they they were best friends. Um, so you know, Max, Alex lost his best friend. Um, they did everything together. They were just inseparable. They 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 shared friends. They um, so he's, it's definitely difficult. Um, and, you know, Max, um, he was six years older than Lily, but he, he coached her basketball team. Um, you know, he, he did a lot with her. They, they, we kind of say they had like this love hate relationship because they definitely was funny because even though he was, they were separated, Alex is in the middle, like those two bickered more than, than Alex and Lily ever did. <laughs> Alex is like the mediator between the two, but, um, but they, I mean, they're, they're doing, they're getting through it um, the best they can. Well, that's wonderful. It's not easy. I mean, it's just, it's not easy. And it's, um, I think it's hard on Alex. Like, again, they were absolutely best friends. Yeah. Um, so it was a gal from, um, from Louisiana, Kelly, um, came and, introduced us to um representative landry and she she just started the ball rolling and introduced us to representative landry and about changing the hazing law because the hazing law in louisiana as everyone knows now i mean was very minimal um and it definitely is not a deterrent and there's no significant you know consequences to it so the biggest thing was we need to strengthen this law and you know, that is absolutely what we did. And, you know, we went, we went back and forth to Baton Rouge to, um, talk to the committee meetings and just, you know, tell Max's story and why the, the law needed to be strengthened, um, to hopefully, I mean, to deter these kids from, you know, they just not doing it. Like hazing is not acceptable and should not be allowed. And it is a felony. It's against the law. It was already against the law. But, I mean, now it's really against the law. It is a felony on your record. You don't recover from that. It's, you know. And, and the speed at which um, the state, you know, got this through, uh, I think it was unanimously on both sides, was just amazing. You know, it, and we met so many great people through the process. And, and, it, and it was a great experience for us because it, well, obviously we've never done anything like that before. And now we we have that experience that we can take to other states. Uh, we're actually um, working with uh, centers here in the state of Georgia to try to strengthen the, the laws in Georgia as well. Uh, so we, we um, partnered with the, uh, the NIC and the, um, the, the I, I always mess this up. It's the North American 
interfraternal. Um, and I see in the MPC. Yeah. <laughs> and in National Pale Line Council. He wasn't Greek. So, so, yeah. okay. so it, but they're you know over the the fraternal systems and the sorority systems, and so we're working with them, and they're helping us get to other states to change to help change laws across the country, and then um, we've also done some presentations. Rayanne's done presentations with fraternities. We did some collectively with some other um, friends of ours that we that have. Um, with the, the Piazzas and Rich Bram, they, they've lost their son to hazing incidents. Um, so we've met some other people in our same situation and we're working together to um, talk to fraternities and sororities and schools. We've talked with, Ray spoke with UGA. Um, we're, we're trying to get the word out as much as possible, talk to as many groups as possible, um, just spread the word about how bad hazing is and how to change it. Um. Yeah, our, our big thing is education. We really would love, like we have talked to several high schools. Um, we're hoping this spring we're also going to talk to several more high schools, like especially high school seniors, to just educate them about what hazing is. Um, a lot of kids go into college and they don't even really understand what hazing is. And we just, I think knowledge is power. And knowing that you can say no and that you do not have to do these things. These are not rites of passage. This is not something you have to do to be a brother. Um, just educating these kids, I think, is, is definitely what needs to be done. And then also, like Steve said, we have definitely talked to, we started talking to several universities. Like we just spoke to UGA a couple weeks ago. Next week we go to Florida State. We talked to Georgia Tech, Old Miss. We have a whole lineup coming. Just talking that it's not just Greek life, it's all organizations because hazing happens in all organizations. And our biggest thing is it's not, it just takes one, you know, rogue organization, one rogue person to take all of these organizations down or to take Greek life down. And it's everyone working together to change it. You know, your chapter or your organization may not haze. But you know somebody else does, and it just takes one night, one bad night, something happening, and they're hazing, and they shouldn't be hazing. And Rand's Rand's biggest thing she says is, if you see, if you see something, say something. Her together, message. yeah, together we can make a difference. We can make a difference, and your camp, every campus can make a difference. LSU's campus can make a difference. You know, you, it's just it's watching out for each other and making sure these things aren't are, hazing is not happening. The, the excessive drinking isn't happening. And, you know, if something does go awry, it's calling for help and getting help for somebody. Um, those are some other laws that came into to play with the Max Grover Act was, um, you know, the duty to assist and the medical amnesty. And, um, I mean, just it's taking care of each other. Everybody needs to take care of each other. The campus of LSU needs to take care of each other. You know, every campus does. We, uh, last summer, we, I did, um, at that time, however, I, I, I had talked to my, both of my boys about Tim Piazza's case, cause it was in the news. Um, and we just kind of talked about, I mean, just that it was wrong and hazing shouldn't happen. Um, you know, hind, like hindsight now, I, it's like, you wish you would have drilled at home. I think, you know, I would have talked to like now I would I, I talked to everybody about it and just all the stories we know now I just had no idea that it was so widespread it, it was so it. widespread that it's it really is on every campus and it's happening you know at every school in different or and not every organization we never want to say that it's not in every organization and and we keep saying I want to know the organizations that aren't doing it and what are you doing that makes your brotherhood and your sisterhood so strong because it is strong and you don't haze 80 pi like my 80 pi we did not haze we didn't haze i never dealt with that at all so i had no idea that it was just again so widespread and so many cases were happening um and I, we think that with, with the internet you know it makes the world so much smaller and and a lot of hazing particularly with attorneys is a lot of one-upmanship you know i can do it worse or 
better in their opinion than the class before, or I can do it better than what they did out in California. So they're, they're seeing things from across the country and they're trying to one up them and, and it, it just is escalating. And we feel like it's getting, getting worse um, just due to social media and the fact the world's a whole lot smaller than it used to be because of everybody's so much closer. We are with Skype. So you, you really need to do your due diligence. Um, it, it, it goes beyond talking to, obviously, the people in the fraternity. You should talk to anyone that knows people in that fraternity. Talk to other fraternities. Talk to other sororities. Um, talk to as many people as you can about the character of the people within that fraternity. And if that fraternity is all about just building their numbers and growing their ranks, that's probably not the one you want to join because they're probably accepting some people that you know, more than likely are, are, do not have the best character. So you, you really need to do your due diligence and peel back the layers of the onion and really understand, you know, what their core values are and are the folks within that fraternity um, respecting their core values or that sorority. Had, had they nipped these things in the bud a long time ago um, and really done the things that they're trying to do today, um, Five, ten, fifteen years years ago, um, well, that would have created change. We thought for Max, we, we we expected Greek life for him to be something that was just icing on his cake. It was just going to make his college experience well, it's so much it, better. It's it's what Greek life should be. So it should be yeah. about making relationships and understanding how to um, be positively social, and you know, and, and you're meeting people that hopefully. Um, are successful and will help make you successful. Just because it happened to you doesn't make it okay for you to do it to somebody else. Actually, you should be who stops it. Because I have yet to meet someone that has said, oh, I like hazing. We've actually met a lot of people who have talked about hazing and that they got hazed. And the one thing they remember is they always remember the person that hazed them. They can't remember 90% of who they went to college with and who was in their fraternity in college, but you know who they do remember? The person that hazed them and they still resent them 20 years later. So that's, you know, to me, that's why, you know, you didn't like it. Why would you then go and do it to somebody else? You know, we just, we ask, you know, the students at LSU to, if you see something, say something, you know, create the change. Think about Max. We, we've got, you know, these wristbands that I'm sure you're seeing around campus. We'll, we'll, we've sent out 70,000 of these things already. Um, we'll send out even more, um, you know, and, and, you know, if you see it, look down at your wrist and think of Max and, you know, step up and, and create Say change, something. you know, Wait. and hazing on your campus, you know. And, Don't be a bystander. Say something. Take care of each other. Take care of each other. Honestly, take care of each other. That's what it's about.